I'm Scott Spicer alongside head varsity football coach John Snowden. We're going to talk a little bit today about the first opening football game against Defiance. And uh, my first question to you, Coach Snowden, is how did the two-a-days show you what your team this year is going to be like? Well, Scott, I think, first of all, they, they showed us they're going to work hard. We had... Uh, we had a great two-a-days this year. The conditioning and everything, the, the team worked very, very hard. Uh, I never noticed a sense of uh, oh, that they were overwhelmed with how hard we were going to work them. They just seemed to keep responding. So I think that's a pretty good indication that we're going to be a, a, a team in good physical condition and that's going to be there in the fourth quarter. And who would you say are your team leaders? Who do you expect to really step up and uh, carry this team? Well, you know, obviously... The first thing you look at is, is uh, the leaders that the kids recognize as leaders, and they, they selected two captains in Ben Snyder and Jade Crossland that have just been um, excellent in exhibiting their leadership. But I have to point to the entire senior class. Uh, you know, they're kind of a special group to me because they were the first class that I came to. That that they're seniors. It's kind of like my senior year this year, my fourth year, and uh, they, so they got a special place in my heart, and they've, they've stuck with the program. Um, They've been through tough times and they've had success, so you know I, I have to look at all of them as good leaders. Okay, very good. And um, what do you look for tonight going into the defiance game? What would you say? Uh, are you going to go to the air or to the ground? What What is your game plan? Well, a as it's been the last three years, we'll have to wait and see what defiance gives us. Uh, fortunately enough, we we have our offense. Deter uh, is basically can be determined by what the defense gives us. Um, I think we have a very intelligent quarterback who has the ability to change the play at the line of scrimmage. If we give him some options, he can change it at the line of scrimmage, and uh, that's what we're going to do. How has this week's practice been? Do you feel that in this final week of preparation for defiance that the kids are really ready? Yeah, we had some pretty poor performances at times in our scrimmages, but we also had some positive things happen. And, this last week's probably been our best week of practice overall. Uh, the hitting has been tremendous. You know, there's no question in my mind there's going to be a lot of hitting in the game. And what does this Defiance team bring? Uh, how does it match up to the Napoleon team? Well, there, there's no doubt. It's more You almost have to take a look at what don't they have. And uh, they, there's not a lot they don't have. They're a very good football team. They're, they're senior loaded. Uh, they've They've gotten uh, some transfers in, and one in particular that pretty much fills in the, the void they were missing at running back. So they're going to be very well balanced. They're going to be big and strong. You know, I mean, we, we've certainly got our hands full. Well, thank you very much, Coach Snowden. I wish you the very much, the very best uh, tonight, and I hope Napoleon goes in there and gives Defiance a real tough fight, and hopefully they'll knock down the Bulldogs. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Scotty. You have a good day, and good luck. That's it from here. Okay. That was an offside call against Defiance. And just as we said in the opening, Ryan Huffman, Napoleon needs breaks from Defiance, such as calls like that, to get ahead in this game with Defiance experience level. And there was an offside call. And there's the opening kickoff. And maybe the, these seniors from Defiance had some opening jitters too. Nick's. There he goes. Two. Snyder, 10, 10, 5, touchdown. I don't see any flags. Oh, my, oh my God, Brian. Whoa, this doesn't even seem like we've really opened up yet. Man, as the Napoleon crowd goes absolutely wild as Ben Snyder received that kickoff, ran through the gaps. Excellent blocking on the Napoleon on the Napoleon front as the coaching staff and the team's going wild. Snyder went wild as he went crashing into the end zone. Oh my, oh my. I cannot contain it. As we can hear the crowd way over here. Wow.
Matthew Russell. We've got Mash, Matt Russell attempting the PAT. Oh, and it was blocked. As maybe Napoleon got a quick punch in before Defiance was aware. And maybe now they're up and ready for the challenge. That's going to be the kind of momentum that these cats are going to need. Maybe to get them down, get the Defiance Bulldogs down a little bit before they can get going. And this, that may be able to just be enough to propel them. And that was just a big, big play by Ben Snyder. That had to be a blow to the whole team right there as Ben Snyder came out and returned that opening kickoff. And that's, I just cannot explain the tenacious, tenacity, tenacity. I cannot explain the, uh, just, it's just awesome, Ryan, how they came out and did that. And uh, they didn't let all the hype about the 31 seniors and get on them. They came prepared. They're ready to rock and roll, Ryan. As we've said before, out of 31 seniors, only 11 can be on the field at once. And uh, that's what we've proved here as Napoleon. Definitely, you can see that they've worked hard for this night. As Coach Snowd said in his interview, had his best week of practice, he thought, this week. So hopefully the Cats are ready to rock and roll. And the kick. That's Russell Osborne. Received. Wow. So the Bulldogs will start. We'll start. That was Nate Drown with the kickoff return. He brought it back to about the 35-yard line. And from there, Defiance will start their drive. Here's Joe Williamson at the helm. He fakes the handoff, rolls out to the left side of your screen, and incomplete for Defiance. The coverage on that play was provided by Ben Snyder. As you saw the fake there, and he rolled around the left side of your screen. And here, uh, behind uh, Joe Williamson would be Josh Hacker at tailback and Matt Valdez at fullback. As that was Val Valdez for five yards, moving the ball to the 40-yard line. And on his line, it tackles. We got Sean Billingsley, a junior, and Kent Huffman, a senior. At guards, we got Mike Nutter, a junior, Joel Perdue, a junior. And at center, handing it off or giving it to Joe Williamson will be Kurt Hasselschwart, also a senior. And the two wideouts are Nate Drown Juniors and Barney Arresti. Williamson throws incomplete. It will be fourth down, and Bulldogs are sending out the punting team. Now I would definitely watch right here for a fake punt by the Defiance Bulldogs. As we know how these games are played of strategy. You've got to think that Defiance has something up their sleeve to unveil on this opening night. Tom Moore, Tom Moore punting. And Tom Moore will be doing the punting. Punt chores for tonight. The punt is up in the air. Hey, it's back to Snyder. He cuts first up to the top of your screen. Then he's scrambling. Oh, no. And he couldn't get anywhere as he was stopped at the 20-yard line. We've got a score of 6 to nothing with 10.32 left in the first quarter. We'd like to remind you that our footage is made possible by the Henry County Bank for all your banking needs the Henry County Bank. Here come the Wildcats up to the line. Scott Rex at the helm. Defiance is going with a six-man front. Cesar Rodriguez in motion. Hands off. Up the middle to Brooks Pedraza. And that's someone we didn't talk about in the opening, Ryan, was Brooks 
Pedraza, a sophomore, a wide-shouldered sophomore that looks to do a lot for the Napoleon Wildcats this year. Yeah, Coach Snow talked about it. He said he has got a lot of promise and really likes this kid's work ethic and really thinks he can help this Napoleon squad. We'd also like to remind you that Napoleon captains this year are Jade Crossland and Ben Snyder, two senior captains. After this play. And Scott Rex fakes the handoff. Oh, and is sacked at about the 17 yard line by number 55. Wow, he faked the handoff and started to roll out towards the upper right hand corner of your screen. And the Defiance defense was not fooled at all. So we've got a third down and 16 coming up for the Napoleon Wildcats. And here are the Napoleon offensive starting line. Uh, at the, in the backfield, we got Cesar Rodriguez playing wing, wing back, Ben Snyder at halfback, and Brooks Pedraza fullback. Uh, on the line, the tackles, we got Lamming and Jason Rickenberg. Uh, as Scott Rex's pass is almost picked off by number four. All right, here's the rest of the starting lineup. The guards, we got Brian Hastings and Josh Fruth. And at center, we have Jade Crossland. And our only and a wide receiver would be Doug Benneke and Ross Durham will be playing tight end. Man, I think there was something definitely wrong. Ryan Kramer will have the punt for Napoleon. This, this defiance receivers are standing in about the 50. He boots that one. And here come the Defiance Bulldogs. Oh, and he is smashed by 78, Josh Lamming. He was right there. Right there. Give him our defense. Let me give him our defense. And Napoleon's defense will be anchored by the defensive line, which is very strong this year and looks to play a heavy part in this year's success. The two ends are Ross Durham and Kenny Peach. Uh, tackles Lee Zamaripa and Jason Rickenberg. And at nose guard, filling the hole, our captain, Jade Crossland. Williams hand, hands off to the full, or fakes the full back to Williamson. 10-5, touchdown. No flags, it's tied at six. Finishing off those uh, defensive starters at corners, we got Ryan Kramer, Nick Sonnenberg, linebackers, Josh Fruth, and John Black, and safety, Tyson Bolton, and our rover, Ben Snyder. Something was definitely wrong on the defense right there as Nick Sonnenberg was standing right next to Williamson as he was running through his hole. Sonnenberg turned his back to Williamson because he thought the other player had the ball. As here comes the Defiance Bulldogs. They're going to make their extra point temp. That's good. That was number 10 with the kick. Rick Miller. And there goes that cannon in Paul J. Brown Stadium. Well, we've got a score of 7-6 to six in favor of the Defiance Bulldogs with 8.49 left in the first quarter. As these Napoleon Wildcats need to get to work quick. As Defiance really unleashed some power right there. Oh yeah, that was a that was a great, well executed play by the Defiance Bulldogs. And now this could be one of the most important series for the Wildcats is to see how these young kids, especially Scott Rex, can be able to overcome that and see if they can get a scoring drive out of this. That's right. That all started back when Rex was sacked and then had an incomplete pass. But hopefully that was all the pregame. And an onside kick was attempted. Number 32, Brooks Pedraza picks it up. He's still on his feet. And those are what you call grunt yards as he stayed on his feet and made the second, even third effort to get up to where he got. The point Wildcats are going to start that drive on the 35-yard line with 8.47 left in the first quarter. We've got a score of 7-6 to six in favor of the Defiance Bulldogs as Scott Rex, and the junior starting quarterback, brings in his play. 
And there go the Wildcats up to the line. Scott Rex gets down, calls out a few signals. Looks back, drops back to pass. Oh, and the Defiance defense was all over him. All over him. Got right in his face and couldn't make that pass as long as he wanted it to be. Ryan. Uh, the Defiance defense is anchored. Their defensive line is at end Scott Brugler and Bobby Ortiz. Tackles Chris Zirkel and Ryan Mummy. And nose guard Tom Tang. Corners are Barney Resty, Nate Killian. The linebackers, Tony Schaefer and their big, big, big linebacker Tom Ward will anchor the middle of that linebacker crew. And Dan Schmeck is the other linebacker and Jason Killian with safety. <laughs> Scott Rex is level but still able to get the pass off to Ross Durham but, only f but for a five yard loss. But there is a flag on the play. It's indicated as holding on the offense. Well, I hope this doesn't keep up much longer. We may not have a quarterback for much longer because Scott Rex is just getting ripped on right now. You're definitely right, Ryan Huffman. That is something that Napoleon does not need right now are penalties because penalties will push us back farther into the hole. And the farther we dig that hole, the harder it is to come back up out of it playing against this experienced Defiance Bulldog team. That penalty was declined. It'll be third and 16, the same position that the Wildcats were on on the last drive when Scott Rex was sacked. In comes the play. I'd like to remind you that this football game and all the football games are brought to you by the Henry County Bank for all your banking needs. We've got a score of 7-6 to six with 8-10 left in the first quarter. Scott Rex gets behind his center. Rolls to the top side of your screen. Looks wide open to Cesar Rodriguez. And he gets it up till about the 40-yard line. That's going to be about a 5-yard gain for the Napoleon Wildcats. As Scott Rex rolled to the top right-hand corner of your screen. That's a very impressive play for the Wildcats as I really like to see Scott Rex when he rolls because he can really fool it. He's got a nice fake. He really fakes the handoff well and he makes it seem as if he is handing it off but really he's going to roll out for the pass. Here's Kramer with the punt. He's ready and bam he sends it. Ooh as in the point in Wildcats are right there lambing again in on the tackle. Lambing is a force on defense. As one Wildcat was right down there, number 36. Kenny Peach. Kenny Peach was right down there. He kind of slid through it. And then Lambing was right there to grab his feet. Nice job, Josh Lambing. Here comes Joe Williamson and his crew. They're going to start their drive on about the 28-yard line. He rolls out to the bottom part of your screen. Oh! And there was an 84. Drome. Keith Drome. He was right there. But Josh Ruth was there on the defense for the Wildcats. Ryan. That was a really nice hit put on there by J Josh Ruth. Timed it perfectly. Didn't let uh, Drone get a good read on the ball and took him out and incomplete. We got second down and 10. You're exactly right. That's right where Josh needed to be, and he did it. As the Defiance Bulldogs try to go up the middle with Valdez, he earns about five yards on that play. Excuse me, that was Josh Hacker on the carry. This will bring up third down and six for the Defiance Bulldogs. They set up in their formation. Looks like the Wildcat defense is ready. Joe Williamson rolls out to the bottom part of your screen. Oh, and wide open was number five. That's good for a first down. That advances the Defiance ball up. We're looking at about the 44-yard line. 
for the Defiance Bulldogs. That was number five. Willie Mendoza was wide open in the flat, and he found him. As Defiance keeps progressing this ball up the field, now they're down to the bottom part of your screen. It's number seven. Takes the snap, fits the handoff, keeps it, and the, the, the point Wildcat defense was right there is Ross Durham, 74, Lee Zamaripa, and Jade Crossland were there on the stop. That's why you like to see tackles, Ryan, a group and tackle in a pack. That's right. They had a good push there. They stayed right on the line. They didn't over-pursue and didn't go after that fake there by Joe Williamson. That's why they were able to string it out and, get, and leave him to a minimal gain. And here come the Bulldogs. Joe Williamson pops up, finds a wide open Keith Drome at about the 50-yard line. It's going to bring up third down for the Bulldogs. They did about four yards for a first down. As Williamson popped right up with that play. I believe that's what they call a pop pass. Pop up and find your man open. The key to that play for the Wildcats is not to let them get much, many yards after the catch. They can just stop that. The, those plays don't add up to a lot of, if you stop them at the, with the first tackle. That's right, Ryan. As here comes the Defiance Bulldogs, that's going to be short as his forward progress was stopped and moved back. That was a nice group tackle for the Wildcats. And that was Hacker with a run. This is going to bring up four down, and what do you think the Defiance Bulldogs will do right here? I think they'll stay with some sort of option of, I don't know who they'll go to. I mean, it's your guess is as good as mine, Scott. I'd like to say they're going to roll out to the top part of your screen. Oh, and a fumble! That looks like Brooks Pedraza picks it up for Napoleon. He comes up with it, but there is a flag on the play, so we're going to see what it is. Okay, picked up. That was heads up play by the Napoleon Wildcats as the refs pick up their flags as the Wildcats were right after that ball. Right after we said fumble, they were there. It looked as if Joe Williamson had trouble making that quick handoff to that fullback, and he, the fullback never got a good handle on it and rolled right in our hands. That's the last luck we're going to need tonight. You're exactly right. We need to take advantage of this opportunity starting on the 50-yard line. They only have to drive half the field. And we'll see what the Wildcats have up their sleeves. It looks like they're going to be a false start call on the Wildcats. Ooh, and just what we talked about, Ryan. They have to make this opportunity work. And if it doesn't, we will be in serious trouble. Uh, we need to take care and take advantage of this opportunity that Defiance has given us. Getting, getting yards have been a, has been a big enough trouble for us already tonight, and we can't be making... Wildcats after their five-yard penalty. Rex rolls back off the tips of Ross Durman. I'd almost have to say that would be defensive pass interference as he was all over Ross before the ball was even there. It did look like the defense got to him a little early, but I that was a dangerous pass there by Scott Rex, and... If it goes off of his hands, I, that can be that can spell trouble for the Napoleon Wildcats as it can go into the hands of a defiance bulldog, and who knows what could happen after that. That's exactly right. We could be in serious trouble. But let's talk for a minute about senior Ross Durham. Number 88 has some real soft hands. It's really versatile for the Wildcats, and he's really an all-around player, and hopefully Ross will have a good year this year. He's just a r really big kid, and Scott Rex should look for him. He's a big target. He can hit him. No problem. And Scott Rex... Hands off to Ben Snyder over the right side. Gets about one, one and a half to make it third down and 13 and a half probably. Yikes. As what I think we need right now is a big crowd-pleasing play from the Point Wildcats. And uh, what do you think that would be, Ryan? I think Scott Rex needs to roll out, get on the moves, stay away from that pass rush of the Defiance Bulldogs, and maybe look for... Uh, Ross Durham out there about 13 yards down the field. Let him let him run for a couple yards. Run over some of those small defensive backs. Let Rex scramble is what you're saying. 
do what he does really nice and let the men get open. Rex fakes the handoff, looks up. Oh, and is swarmed by a pack of Defiance Bulldogs. They were released from the pound on that one. <laughs> and Rex was sacked for a loss. This is going to bring out the Napoleon punt unit. We've got three minutes and seven seconds left in the first quarter. A score of seven to six. And we've got a change in punters. Ben Snyder's going to try his leg here. As the Defiance receivers go back to about the 30-yard line. And the snap. The punt is up. A good one. High bounder. Fair catch signaled by 25 and 36. Kenny Peach was again there. A little bit too close for comfort as he could have got a call for being in that fair catch. Okay. The Bulldogs are going to start this drive with 2.43 left on the clock. 2.43 left in the first quarter. We've got a score of 7-6. to six. Balls on the 28-yard line. First and 10 for the Defiance Bulldogs. Williamson with a handoff coming down to the bottom part of your screen. Wow. And Hacker for just about five yards. They had Kramer and Snyder in on the stop. That's something the Napoleon Wildcats need is more, more of those first down, quality first down plays so they aren't first and 15 all the time, or second and 15. More like second and five would be more realistic. Very good, Ryan. That is true indeed what they need. Here's Williamson. Looks back for the pass. Wow, he gets it off to Keith Drone. Good for a first down. At 74, Lee Samaripa got in the quarterback's face. He was right there, right after he released that ball and kind of knocked him down a little bit. But, hey, the change advanced for the Defiance Bulldogs. And in my book, if you're advancing the change, you're having a good night. I got to see. I, I would think, I have to think the wild, the Bulldogs are, have to keep looking at Keith Drone. He's been open a lot here lately, across the middle, open into flats, whatever it takes. And Joe Williamson seems to like to find him. Williamson's back again, rolling to your right, to the right. Finds number 25, open to 30, the 20, and I don't think anybody's going to catch him. As he runs through the end zone. That's going to make our score 13 to 6. As that was a 55-yard touchdown pass by Joe Williamson to something. Uh, and he caught, he caught a caught the cats napping a little bit and 25 just slipped right behind the two defensive backs there and Williams has just lofted it right over his head. That was Larry Hartzell with the touchdown. And he played that real smart, just got where nobody was and Williamson found him for another heads up play by their senior quarterback. Kicks up and it's good. Phil Burke with another PAT to make the score 14 to six with a minute 35 to go in the first quarter. Wow, Ryan Upman. All I can say is the Defiance Bulldogs broke it away right there. As you said, found the cats napping. Okay. As we're nearing the end of the first quarter, we've got approximately 1 minute and 35 seconds left. We've got a score of 14 to 6. We need to do, as you said, just get a few first downs, build up a little confidence, get rid of the pregame jitters. And there's another low bounder kick as it's bobbled around by 36 Brooks Pedraza. But he finally got control of it. And the Wildcats will start this drive on about the 38-yard line. No. All right. We're going to start this drive first and 10. With a 131 left in the first quarter. And I would think that the Wildcats would want to try just to remain with the ball through the end of this quarter. As here they come up to the line. And the snap. Scott Rex hands off up the center. That's going to be good for about a two-yard gain. That was Brooks Pedraza on the carry. 
and Tom Ward had to stop. And that was good for a couple cents change. As maybe that's what the Wildcats are going to try and do. As they're faced with a ball of second and seven. Right now. As Scott Rex barks out the calls. Hands off again to Brooks Pedraza. Tried to go around the top side of your screen. Again, an extremely short gain. For the Wildcats, they're going to say he squeezed out about a yard. We're looking at third and seven for the Wildcat. Tom Ward really stepped up into that hole, met him, made a squared up his shoulders, and made a real nice tackle on Brooks Pedraza there to not let him get any extra yardage. That's very true, Ryan Huffman. As here we are again, faced with third down. At least they aren't as bad as the previous two have been. Third and sixteen, third and sixteen, now third and seven. Rex rolls. It's the option to Caesar Rodriguez, and Caesar is stuffed. That's going to be stuffed for almost a loss. As Rex decided to flip it to Rodriguez, and Defiance was not fooled a minute on that play. That was Schaefer on the stop. Well, hey, that's the end of the first quarter. With a score, 14 to 6, and Fred J. Brown Stadium, Defiance, Ohio, as this Defiance crowd gets a little crazy. Ringing the we have been, as I should say, there's a lot of pressure on the quarterback to get his playoff quick. And I don't know, this is definitely a battle of the trenches right here, Ryan Huffman. Yes. And there we go. That was a uh, infraction for Napoleon. Moved it back another five yards. So here we are again, hurting ourselves. First and fifth. Oh, Kramer with a punt. That's a nice roll. Takes it down to about uh, to about the 27-yard line. And right here, we're going to see these Brian, excuse me, Defiance Bulldogs go to work. They're going to have first and ten right here at the beginning of the second quarter, Ryan. The defensive line right here has to get a good push. The cornerbacks got to hold their spots, got, got to watch those uh, little out patterns where don't let anybody sneak behind them like what hurt them the last touchdown drive. We got Williamson underneath center. Number five moves in motion behind him. Oh, that, that's a number five. He... He must not have been on the same cue as a quarterback on the snap count and just overran it too, too early and seemed to come across the line of scrimmage. That, that was Willie Mendoza there with the infraction as he comes out of the game promptly there. I'll take it. Uh, the games can be seen on Monday nights at 6 o'clock, and they will be replayed again at Tuesday on 6 o'clock. You can see your Wildcats, uh, analyze the game, and listen to us. As they come up to the line, you got Joe, Willi Joe Williamson looking it over again. It's barking out signals. 25 Hartzell moves in motion to your lower corner. Give to number 23 and stop for a five-yard, for about a five-yard gain. You're resty with the carry. And it, they're calling it second and 11. Four yard play there. That was a good job by the defensive line of stringing it out and letting the linebackers and DBs finish up the tough work there. Here we got Williamson again. Drops back, rolls to your lower portion of your screen. Everybody's covered as Brooks Pedraza comes up and doesn't give Williamson any kind of gain there. He might have, at most, maybe a yard. That was a good job of Brooks Pedraza recognizing that and stepping up and making the tackle. Yes, it is, Ryan Huffman. As Brooks Pedraza on these last two plays has been all over in the field. He was on the top side of your screen and the bottom side of your screen all over. Excellent work 
by Brooks Pedraza. We've got 10, 36 left in the second quarter. Williamson fakes the handoff to lower part of your screen, rolls out to the top screen, is met by number eight, Ryan Kramer. And Ryan Kramer put a face mask in his back. And I don't think Valdez is going to forget about Kramer for a while. They had the defensive line confused a little bit there on that rollout, but Ryan Kramer did his, as he's been taught many times in two days this summer and stuck with his man didn't, and stuck a good little hit on him and what and he wasn't able to hold on. As we got Tom Ward back to punt, we got Ryan Kramer and Ben Snyder back receiving that kick. Punts off. Fair catch by Nick Sonnenberg. Sorry, that was Nick Sonnenberg, not Ryan Kramer back receiving that punt. As the Wildcats will start their drive on the 42-yard line. Again, I'd like to remind you, all the point football games are brought to you by the Henry County Bank for all your financial needs, the Henry County Bank. Here's Scott Rex brings in the play. We've got a latecomer in here from the point, Doug Benneke. He needs to hustle in there. The point Wildcats set up their defense. They're working from the lower part of your screen. That ball set on the lower hash. Hand off to Ben Snyder. He makes it up for a gain of about two and a half yards. It's going to be about second and eight. As Ben Snyder's legs were moving there. That's what you need to have as a running back. You need to keep those legs are driving and keep moving, lower your head, and push through the line. Hopefully you've got some good blocking to get yourself through there. And if not, sometimes you can go the other way. Rex looks, scrambles, nothing doing there as he is sacked by 34. Which is going to bring up a third and 15 for the point Wildcat. That was by uh, tackle by Hacker. Playing the end over there. Okay. Third and 15, as we said, for the Wildcats as they lost some yards there. Scott Rex fakes the handoff, rolls off to the top your screen. Nothing doing there either. That pass was intended for 17 Tyson Bolton. And Tyson was up in the air, but the Defiance defender was right on him as Gillian was in there for the Defiance Bulldogs. Fourth down and 15. The Rusty and Hartzell are deep for Defiance. Kramer will have the kick. The snap, the punt, ooh, and it was kind of low that time as <laughs> Hatzel pick, Hartzell picks it up. Not much of a gain, about two yards. Defiance Bulldogs are going to start this drive from about the 32-yard line, their own. We've got 8.46 left in the first half. Williams to come up the line with Drown into the lower portion of your screen at wide receiver. Barking out signals. 23's in motion. They get give is to Valdez who seems to squirt through there and power with lots of power for about six yards. That'll bring up about a second and four and their offensive line seemed to get a lot of push there and makes just a big enough hole for him to get through there and Wildcats weren't able to shut that hole fast enough before he got through there. Here's the Bulldogs again, setting up, coming to the line. That was Valdez, Valdez again. He seemed to come up a yard short, for, so we'll have a, probably third and a yard, third and short. Lee Zamaripa with the tackle there. He's able to plug the hole. 
Joe from the first quarter, maybe. Well, we'll do that at <laughs> halftime. All right. There's the Bulldogs again. Wildcats set up in their basic 5-2. Power, power running with the Bulldogs as they give it to Valdez again. They're giving Valdez all kinds of work right now as he gets three more and is able to move the chains. And there you saw it, Ryan, what we've been saying for this whole first half. What's the point Wildcats need to do? Hit it out, drive it out. As we just saw Defiance do it, get some nice quality runs, and I think Defiance feels now that they can establish their running game. Back to you, Ryan. That's right. Here, here comes Joe Williamson drop back and again. He looks to go deep. It's up in the air. Oh, and Jason Rickberg was just unable to get to it as fingertips. As Ross Durham put on the hit and was able to put it up in the air. And as Scotty was telling me, just off his fingertips. He just couldn't quite get out there far enough. So that almost spelled disaster for Joe Williamson as he was trying to go deep to his main receiver, Keith Drown. That could have been a big, big play if that could have gone to Jason Rickenberg there. He was reaching. Got second and ten. Well, power running. Nope. Williamson keeps it. it. Looked as if they had given it to Valdez again, but he, Williamson decided to keep it and was only able to get about two yards to bring up third and eight. This is going to be a pretty big play here for the Wildcats. They can stop him here. Have plenty of time with... 6.55 to go in the quarter to get a good drive and maybe get a get some points on the scoreboard. They got to stop them here. They got to buckle down. Imagine they'd have some sort of pass here with Williamson. It's been working all night. I don't think we'll see why they go away from it. Another rollout to Hartzell again. Short. It's about four yards short as, it, as Williamson got hammered back there by Number 74, Lee Zamaripa, but, but he's still able to get it off, and Nick Somberg was able to push him out of bounds before he was able to get the first down. And the Bulldogs send out the punting team. Almost got to think you got to be watching for a fake here with, with fourth and three at about the 50-yard line. You don't think they're going to get much of a punt here unless they're trying to pin him back deep, but... Wildcats got to be on their toes here. It looks like they're trying to play a regular defense. They ain't going to try and put too much pressure on them. It goes through Ward's hands. Pursued by Peach. And they tackle him about the 45-yard line. That's where the, the Wildcats will get the ball. and That's going to be a big play. That, that gives them good field position to get that score before halftime and see if they can grind it out here in the next 624 for a first down. I'd like to see them really... Try and run it through them and take it to them. And get some first downs here. Get in scoring position. That's exactly how I feel, Ryan Huffman, is what Napoleon needs to do. Right here. Again, this is the second time that they've had this great field position to start a drive. It's first and ten at Defiance's 45-yard line. So, Napoleon's going to start right here. They need to make this a positive instead of a negative. Correct rolls out and stripped up by the Defiance defense. Wow. Man, Rex was rolling up to the top side of your screen looking for a pass. His feet were moving, but 21 just got his feet in there on a dive and tripped up Rex. Rex comes the other way, unloads it off the hands of Cesar Rodriguez. Incomplete. And here we go. We've got third down already. We've got a third down and about 16 for Lady Cats. Excuse me, for the Wildcats. I was used to the volleyball game there. I'm sort of getting some of my pregame jitters out, too. We experienced a little trouble at the beginning with our audio on that end of it. And... So we had to start our opening three times over. But hey, that's all right. You'll have that. That's the handoff to number 12, Pedraza. Gets it back to about the original line of scrimmage where they originally started this drive. And in comes the punting unit. Again, this is NCTV 5 
your hometown public access channel, bringing you the best that we have to offer. The f Napoleon Wildcat football teams are brought to you by the Henry County Bank. Uh, like a friend, they're here for you, the Henry County Bank. Block punt! Block punt! Picked up by Defiance. Oh my! The 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Defiance! Defiance box Snyder's punt. Wow! What do you have to say, Ryan Hoffman? Special teams do it again here, here at Fred J. Brown Stadium as the Bulldogs are, are the, on the end of this special teams big play here as we've seen a block or a misplayed punt by the Bulldogs and a bad coverage by the Bulldogs is when Snyder got his touchdown and now a as somebody m missed their block is number 21 came through there and got uh, blocked it with no problem on Ben Snyder and, and picks it up all the way for this for the touchdown as the Bulldogs go for a two-point conversion they give the they give to Valdez. They give to Valdez for the two-point conversion. And that's going to make the score 20 to, 22 to six. Now the now the Wildcats really dug themselves a hole with that one, and the Wildcats need to keep that in mind. It's never too late to regroup. They can come out of the locker room at halftime saying it's zero zero, and be ready to really play the game. As we're going to see Ward with the kickoff. Here it is. It's another low one that Bobbles picked up. My number eight, Ryan Kramer. He goes, tries to go up the middle. And they're going to spot this ball at about the 41 yard line. So Napoleon, 41 yard line. Napoleon's going to start right here with a first down. Ryan. I think the Bulldogs were, were a little, aren't going to kick to Ben Snyder anymore after that first play. And I, I've got to agree with them. I wouldn't do it after that big play by Ben Snyder. So Tom Moore's just been squib kicking it, hitting it to the up man. They're settled with giving the Wildcats the ball on about the 40, between the 40 and 45 yard lines. That's right, Ryan. They're a smart team. They're not going to kick to him again because uh, he is. He's a great, great runner. And he will break from you. And I think they were really surprised at what he came out and did at the beginning. I think Defiance was kind of sleepwalking. As Napoleon is going second down to have the ball back up to the original line of scrimmage. Minimal gain on that carry. As Rex barks out a few calls. The snap. Fumble, picks it up, just barely gets it handed off, I think, and I think they just fall on it for safety. No gain on that play. Maybe even a little loss. As there were problems between the snap and the quarterback. As we've got third down and about 11 for the Wildcats. As they really need the first down here. Well, we're before we go in to the locker rooms at halftime. The snap. Rex hands off to number eight, Ryan Kramer, and he gets min minimal yardage. And in comes Snyder to attempt to punt. Okay, this is about fourth down and eight with 328 left in the first half. We've got a score of 22 to 6 here in Paul J. Brown Stadium in Defiance, Ohio. As that Defiance defense looked ready as they were almost in there again. The nice punt by Snyder picked up by 25. I believe that's Hartzell. Larry Hartzell. Wow, he really did boot that one. Josh Fruth had to stop. Oh, the, the Wildcats got to buckle down here and 
can't can't let him get another score here. That's going to be a real backbreaker for the for the Wildcats. They give the Hacker for three yards. So good job of closing the hole by the linebackers and everybody else. To, as Fruth tripped him up and was able to get the stop there. Second, and they call, we're calling it second down and seven for the Bulldogs. Let's talk a little bit about this J Josh Hacker kid from Defiance. Came in about two or three weeks ago, transferred in, and they say he is just awesome. So let's see what he does tonight. As Williamson hands off. Uh, going up the middle. Looks like that might be good enough for the first down. That was Valdez with the carry. We'll see where they're going to mark it. Ooh, just short. So, we've got about third and one here for the Defiance Bulldogs. Uh, officials time out. Looks like they're going to measure. This ball is on the 36-yard line. Williamson hands off to 37. Hacker. Wow! As he made second and third efforts on that one to run it up. He made a gain of about nine. That's going to bring up second down and one. Great blocking up front from the Defiance offensive line. This is a very, very short one. A minute 50 left in the first half. The handoff is to 25. Hartzell. It looks like he might have enough. And they signal the first down. They move the chains again. Ball is on the 46-yard line. Timeout. Dogs. Team, September 2nd will be away at Continental and September 4th home at Faustoria. So there's a little bit of information about what's going on at high school on the athletic side of things. Let's get back to the game. Joe Williamson never got anything going on that play as he loses just about six or seven, or excuse me, five yards on that play. It looked, it looked like as Joe, Joe Williamson wasn't able to get a good hand on the snap and that just kind of threw the whole the whole playoff whack there and the, the defense got good penetration and Lee Zamripa was able to stop him. Williamson rolls rolls out and gets off a pass to Tom Ward there for about seven yards. It's gonna leave him with a third and eight there. As Snyder puts a good hit on the big tight end from Defiance, Tom Ward and doesn't let him get any yards after catch. Williamson, uh, the quick quick no uh, fuddle passes. It's intercepted by Ryan Kramer. He doesn't go down. He's up. He's up to the 40. He's running around, hit by five. Number five, he redirects himself and is swarmed under at the 40-yard line. That was a good play there by Ryan Kramer to keep his balance, get some yards, and make a good in the traffic catch as the Wildcats got 44 seconds to get a drive here and maybe get a score. That would be a real, a real confidence booster for these Wildcats. As Rex is under center, trying to get something going here. We got two wideouts. Uh, Cesar Rodriguez, and they go out to Tyson Bolton, but it was let go a little early by Scott Rex, and almost intercepted by number 28. Uh, the Wildcats are going to have to go to the air here. Hopefully, they can get something going. Find somebody going down the sideline, or some maybe even catch them snapping and catch somebody over the middle for a big gainer here. Just something to get the offense going. As we were working with very little time here, and we need to get lots of yards. This pass is caught by number 15, Jared Van Osdale, a senior, for. A, a seven to eight yard gain as the Wildcats had good protection there and the defense wasn't able to was able wasn't able to get to the quarterback Scott Rex and he had plenty of time released a nice pass to Jared Van Osdale and the Wildcats called timeout. Also, as Napoleon comes up to the line, it's gonna be third down and about three. So I'd like to see the Wildcats get it first down here, as I'm sure you would. 
Rex rolls back, unleashes, finds Ben Snyder, good enough for the first down. Ben is still on his feet at about the 42-yard line. Oh, and Defiance finally gets up to find him. They're going to spot it, though, at the 41, but it looked like he was good for 42 from my angle. Okay, first down with 18.6 seconds left. And here we go. Hopefully the, the Wildcats can find somebody open with 18 seconds left. The snap. Rex drops back, looks to wide open Ben Snyder. Oh, and he's tripped up. That was a gain good enough for just about, I'm going to say, roughly four yards. He was tripped up by Tony Schaefer. Wow, Snyder was tearing off. If he wouldn't have been stopped, he would have been gone. He would have had at least enough for the first down, if not more. But that's something we got to look for for the next down. Second down. And about six. That's right. As We'd like a touchdown, but any points will help us reduce the deficit. Rex drops back, unloads one to number nine, Nick Sonnenberg, and it's picked off by the Defiance Bulldogs with 3.2 seconds left in the first half. What a blow for the Wildcats, Ryan. Another blow. Uh, the Bulldogs are just falling in here, and, and they do, they step on it, and that's going to be the end of our first half as the score is 22 to 6 with the Bulldogs going, going out to the lead. Snyder running all the way back for the Wildcats only touchdown Tom Ward another ground ball to Ryan, off Ryan Kramer's hand and Nick Sonnenberg comes up towards the 30 and gets leveled by by three Bulldogs oh. so hey hey Ryan Huffman we're back here in Paul J Brown Stadium in Defiance Ohio as you can see the lights on the field have gotten brighter as the natural light has gone down. So we're going to start to see darkness here in Defiance, Ohio, as hopefully the Napoleon Wildcats can turn up the heat here and make some of their own heat. As we'd like to see these Wildcats turn it up, that was a handoff right up the gut. Handoff to Pedraza. That was a uh, uh, one or two yards gains. All right, that's a gain of one to be exact. It'll be second down and nine. For Napoleon, in come Nick Sonnenberg, Jared Van Osdale, Ryan Kramer. Out go Cesar Rodriguez. Oh, and Cesar turns around and comes right back in. And there he goes again. As he hustled right out of there, Scott Rex, they're working from the bottom hash. Oh, tripped up and then barrel rolled by the Defiance defense. Another long third down conversion for the Wildcats. They just haven't been able to stay away from those. They haven't been getting into the third and ones like Defiance Bulldogs have. How many times have we heard third and 16 tonight, Ryan? Oh, it's been, pro we're, we're approaching double digits for our th third and longs here. And as the, bull, the Wildcats decide to go up the gut with Ryan Kramer for probably three yards. As, they, as we send it in the punting unit, which has gotten a good workout here tonight for the Wildcats, as we got Ben Snyder again. Trying to see if he can get one off. A low snap, fielded, is all right, takes an extra step, gets it off. Field by number 25, Hartzell. As they're going to whistle the whistle Hartzell down at the 37-yard line. So from this offense, long passes to Keith Drone and Hartzell have really put, put it to the Wildcats. The running game hasn't hurt us as much as those big plays from the wide receivers. As the offensive line jumps for the Bulldogs, and that'll send them back five yards. That's something we haven't seen much out of this. Defiance Bulldogs team here tonight. 
That's right, Ryan. Uh, so we're going to have first and 15. First and 15 situation for the Defiance Bulldogs. First and 15 is a little bit easier to work from than a third and long. Hey! Back on the field. Williamson drops back. Passes up. Ooh! Almost picked off by Ty Bolton. He was right there, headed in his hands, as a matter of fact but couldn't bring it the rest of the way in. Okay, second and 15 still. No gain on that play as Tyson Bolton was ooh so close. Yes indeed. As these Wildcats look a little revived here. It's 22 to six at the beginning of the third quarter. Williamson rolls out to the top side of your screen Passes to, oh, incomplete. Wow. Intended for your Rusty. And he was out there on a lean. Let me tell you. 9.39 left in the third quarter. The score of 22-6. to six. We'd like to remind you that Napoleon Wildcat football is brought to you by the Henry County Bank. For all your banking needs, stop by the Henry County Bank. Williamson's going to work about third and 15 drops back in the pocket lets one rip oh and Ryan Kramer was working right alongside 84 Keith Drone the whole way and it was an incomplete pass Ryan wow that was some really sticky coverage there by Ryan Kramer as he was right with Drone kept step by step made a good leap at the ball but was just wasn't able to get it and neither was Drone so it was nice to see the Bulldogs have to deal with a third and 15 rather than the Napoleon Wildcats. Pump. Oh, and Tom Ward shanks a punt bad as it, the, the, the Wildcats are going to get some really favorable field position out of this punt. As they're going to mark that about the 40. 45 it looks as that was only about a seven yard punt on the ball at the defiance 45 yard line here we are getting those great possessions to start on in between the 40 and 50 yard line great field position rex fakes the handoff rolls out to the top side of your screen and then pumped on as the defiance dog pound released its hounds and they went after him as Rex really did fake the fake handoff as he had me fool but not the Defiance Bulldogs hey and we're gonna start out here with a second 14 for Scott Rex and his Napoleon Sons of Bonaparte he barks out a few signals Snyder in motion Rex with the handoff for little or no gain. That was Cesar Rodriguez with the carry. Tang and Schaefer on the stop. No gain. Third down and 14. So it's kind of like playing that down over, but you lost one. As Rex, Cesar Rodriguez in motion, fakes the handoff, rolls down to the bottom part of your screen, gets some good blocking, lets one go. Caught by Doug Benicky. He brought that in with a one-handed grasp. And that's the first bright light we've seen since Snyder ran that kickoff back at the beginning of the game. Hopefully these Wildcats will be able to move the chain as they're going to try and go for it on fourth down. Let's hear a yelp for these Wildcats back home. Rex with the handoff. Oh, they tried to go up the middle of, with Brooks Pedraza. And he's going to come up just a little short as the ball, as the bells go crazy here in defiance. Okay. Napoleon is going to 
excuse me, the point will now be on defense. And Defiance is going to start on offense from their own 37. And see what they can do here. We've got a score of 22 to 6 with 7.07 left in the third quarter. And here's an early flag. Well, let's see what the call's going to be. The legal procedure against Defiance. Uh, they're going to lose uh, five yards right there. So now, instead of the 37, they're going to be looking at about the 32-yard line. Here's a break for the Wildcats. Get them deeper in their territory. The handoff. Went to Valdez. Valdez. They say eh, about three. I'm going to say about two. A long two. As this is a war of the trenches. Ooh. As Sam Ripple was a little jumpy on the front, they run it right up the middle. Oh, and they call a flag. As 73 from Defiance hauled off on a Napoleon player. Hit him. And that's going to be unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike. Conduct, personal foul on Defiance. I believe that 73 uh, was hitting 63 John Black. And Black, he's a tough guy. He won't take too much. Is there having a little meeting? He was Sean Billingsley was the name. We think that he has been thrown out. And they're going to take the change way back. And that's just, an, just a stupid play by the Sean Billingsley of the Defiance Bulldogs. Why would you do something like that when you're up 22 to 6? And if he if he has been thrown out, as we believe he has been, as the seemed like the, the referees gave him the boot there, and just and he could be out for another one or two games. I don't know if the Defiance Bulldogs are going to like that too much, losing their... Starting offensive guard there. As the Wildcats are able to deflect a pass, number number seven deflects it for the Wildcats. Number two, or sorry, that was Ben Snyder, number two deflecting it for the Wildcats. I don't know who the hell it was. As the Wildcats are going to fo force the Bulldogs to punt again for the. It was actually Brad Cordes, number seven. I was correct the first time. As uh, so, Wildcats should get pretty good field position here once again. Get some good, some good pressure. As oh, and the Tom Ward got a really beneficial bounce there. As the Wildcats are going to get it about their own 43-yard line. Only what the Wildcats need here is some more excellent, excellent starting position. As Rex barks out a few signals, turns, fakes that give, rolls out, finds Ross Durham open, flag on the play. As that's really what I like to see Scott Rex run, is executing the fake handoffs and rolling out to either the far side or the near side and uh, really, really makes that look crisp. As the Defiance Bulldogs are called for holding, and that's going to move the chains for the Napoleon Wildcats. As they'll get 10 yards and a first down off that, and it's another first down for them. They're second of the game, and that was a very nice play by Scott Rex there to get the ball in his hands to his big tight end, Ross Durham, which I think they need to do a lot more of. And, and yes, it is a first down for the Wildcats. They're going to march the ball. Oh, they're going to get. They're going to get 50 to this. Maybe things will start getting wild here. 
and hopefully they do. Bam, Rex with a handoff to Brooks Pedaza. He jumps and leaps for a gain of about three and a half. Ward on the stop. Maybe these Wildcats will finally start rolling this at and get their play made. Rex, hands off, Pedraza. Ooh, right there. As Pedraza is getting stopped real quick, legs are getting knocked uh, away from him. That was a gain of about a yard or so, about a yard and a half. As Darren Van Osdale is in motion. Cesar Rodriguez also in motion. Rex fakes a give. Gets it off. Almost picked off. Wow. As Rex turned around to start heading to the far side of your screen, he was met in the eyes by 55. But that was 23. That was 23, Barney Yristy on the stop. But 55 was right there in Rex's face. As the Wildcats don't have anything to lose, so they're going to try it again on fourth down, which I think is a wise decision. Rex rolls back, gives to Snyder. Snyder caught and dropped for about a four-yard loss by 27. I believe that was Schaefer. Wow, Ryan Huffman. One's really going to need a whirlpool tomorrow morning, Scott Spicer. You better believe that. If I was him, I'd be hitting it tonight. As Napoleon Wildcat captain Ben Snyder calls a timeout. As a Wildcat defense wasn't set up. At the flow in the first half, maybe the Wildcats can get into it and really get the flow this half. Well, I hope so. As Williamson fakes the give. He's off to the 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown defense! And just as we were talking about both teams not being able to muster anything up, defiance comes out with an awesome fake. And that's, I've noticed that in Williamson all night. It's his faking ability. It looks like he's almost stopped. Like he's really going to give it. Him and his running back will run right next to each other. And just like... I mean, they're shoulder to shoulder, and but that time, he decided to take it on his own, and man, did he fool the Wildcats. He really, Joe Williamson's really impressed me with the way he runs out those fakes, even when he doesn't have the ball. He runs them out the way, he's, the way he should and the way he's been taught. Good coaching by Jerry Beauty's part, as Phil Burt once again tacks on that extra point for the Defiance Bulldogs, and we now have a score of 29 to 6. As that may just be the blow that's going to knock over these Napoleon Wildcats. I would have to say, Ryan, as you said, with 3:52 left, 29 to 6, I got to believe that the Wildcats are in trouble. We'd like to remind you that all Napoleon Wildcat football, bringing you the best that we have to offer. Along with football this fall season, we're going to bring you some volleyball. Another ground bouncer. Definitely, no, oh, it was touched by Ryan Kramer. He picks it up. Oh, tries to get some yardage. Tried to make it up to the 30. Didn't quite make it. And she scrambled and flanked and fluked for just about three yards. So, Napoleon's going to try and start a drive. Napoleon's going to start on the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10. With 3.47 left. Cesar Rodriguez in motion. Rex. Gives off to Brooks Pedraza. 
as they're really trying to work Brooks tonight, Ryan. They are getting a lot of work out of the young sophomore here as they're giving him lots of carries, letting him see what he can do. And he's running real hard for the Wildcats. It's just this defiance Bulldogs defense is really tough, and they're they're big, and they, Brooks is having trouble just running over these guys and getting the, that yardage as the offensive line is trying to get somewhat of a push, but against this defensive line, it's been tough today. Just as important as what the game is on the ground and in the air, also you need to think about the game that's going on in the trenches. And uh, Defiance definitely has the upper hand on that. As they hand it off again to Brooks. Fumble. Oh. Things are getting hot in this Napoleon Defiance rivalry. The guys just need to settle down and say, and just be cool and play the game. There's no need for that unsportsmanlike conduct. Third, down seven. It's third and seven. For the Wildcats is Jared Van Osdale hustles out of the playing area. Point Wildcats step up to field. Scott Rex checks his line. And he rolls out, fake the give, puts it up in the air through the hands of Doug Benneke. There is a flag, but these Wildcats <laughs> seem to always have a trouble. There's always somebody on their back. They always have a shadow. And those are, <laughs> of course, the likes of the Defiance Bulldogs. And they're right there. Now let's see. What do we have for a call, Ryan? I think they're going to call holding on the Wildcats is... Rex was trying to scramble, and somebody must have grabbed a jersey or something, just trying to get him off. And it was it was declined by the Bulldogs. It's going to be fourth and seven, and, and we bring in the punting team. It seems like every time Rex goes out to scramble now, I've seen is there's always a defiance Bulldog coming around the end to meet him right square in the face. So he's got to make his decision quick. One of the strengths that Coach Snow talked about in his young Scott Rex was his ability to change the plays at the line of scrimmage, and hopefully that'll play into part for this season. The punt is up and good. Sends it back to 23, you're risky. Bam! He is met by 63, John Black. John Black is playing with a little fire in his tummy. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's good to see that desire out of these Wildcats still with the score the way it is. They are. They're a great group of kids, and they've been taught to never give up. And no matter what the score is, you never give up. You never stop giving 110%. And I think that's what Coach John Snow and the rest of his coaches try to get across. One of the main points of their program is never give up in the game and in life. Never give up. You're going to face your downs and ups and your woes, and you need to, you need to stand tall in both the good times and the bad times. As Williams... Hands off right up the middle. Has Valdez, the runner, gets enough for the first down. As it looks like this Defiance team is going to try and see how far they can get with the run. First and ten for the Bulldogs. With one minute and 16 seconds left in the third quarter. Williamson brings his Bulldogs up to the line. We've got a score of 20-96. Mm, the handoff to 35. And he scrambles. Hartzell. Pick up good for seven. And obviously these Defiance Bulldogs have established their running game. As they just seem to be running wild over these Wildcats. A motion again. The same play as he ran right through the middle. Good enough for a first down. And they move again. The chain gang's moving. And right now the Defiance Bulldogs are just saying, we're going to run right at you and we're going to stick your helmet right to you and we're going to get yards no matter. And the Wildcats just got to 
find a way to push them back and stop that. And right now, the Defiance Bulldogs are just running it right up their gut. Yes, indeed they are. As Williamson breaks around the far side of your screen, and Wildcats quickly swarmed him. And ju just like I just said, that's what they—that's what they just did. And they were able to stop their uh, movement. And Henry County Bank. Around noon for the third shift workers that don't get to see this program. Williamson continues to drive, flips it out to the top side. Here's ball comes out, fumble, and a flag. As we've had two or three things, the early indication is face mask. As Napoleon players grabbing their face mask and look in dismay. Face mask, Napoleon. Tough break for the Wildcats as that ball came flying out of there, Ryan. Yeah, they, he had some help getting that ball out of there. I think somebody got around on the, just got his arm up a little high. Didn't, I'm sure it wasn't blatant to take the kid's face mask off, but that's the way it goes. And just hands got up a little too high and the ball came loose. But unfortunately, the uh, umpire saw it and they're, they're going to keep moving the football for the Defiance Bulldogs. As, yes, they vindicated. And this is going to be a big one as they move it half the distance to the goal to the 10-yard line. As this has been really the first drawn-out play for the drawn-out drive for the Defiance Bulldogs. Most, yeah, most of them have been quick, long, quick, long-distance runs or passes for the Defiance Bulldogs, and this has been their first really established drive. As once again they just give it right up the gut with Valdez as he's he's really working now and get. Got the big fullback really moving right up through the gut for the Fines Bulldogs. And they've just, they just called a fumble on uh, Fines Bulldogs, and the Point Wildcats are able to pounce on it as the Wildcats get the ball back with about the three yard line for the. Uh, yes, as that was a late call coming in. I wondered if something might be up, and then the all the Napoleon hands started flying and uh, hopefully they're starting from deep Scott Rex is starting from almost in the end zone gets it out to Cesar Rodriguez cuts it up around the outside and a fumble unclear on whose ball this might be looks like it's picked up again by Napoleon so they got some additional yardage up to the 13 yard line. Excuse me, 12 yard line. Yeah, Caesar with the carry. Pedraza picked up the fumble. As the Wildcats handoff to Ben Snyder. He comes around the near side of your screen. Jukes and Jives finally taken down by a group of about four defiance defensive men. That's a first down. As we've seen the Napoleons may be on the road to a good drive. Maybe the Wildcats are, though, with the offense being well rested since they haven't been moving the ball very well, maybe they're starting to get to that defense and maybe they can grind out some tough yardage and get some first downs here. Very good, Ryan Huffman. So hopefully that'll happen as... The Wildcats start off on the near hash. Rex barks out a few signals, gets a snap, hands off. Brooke Pedraza finds an opening. Comes up to about the 33-yard line. That was your rusty on the stop. Gain of about seven on the play. The first excellent run by Brooks Pedraza here tonight. That's right. He can't. He, he saw the hole, he really burst through it and took on a couple of guys and was able to push forward for a couple extra yards as they're coming. Maybe they'll just keep trying to run it out. It seemed to work on the last couple of plays. Maybe they can get something going on the ground here. As they pitch it out to Snyder, who cuts up, is able to get maybe one, one and a half here. 
for first down. As your resty gets another stop on the defensive line, and we got third and probably five for the Wildcats. And they're calling it a long three. As maybe though, maybe with this running game, maybe they can get something going through the air. Maybe this will open something up there. Rex rolls out. He's moving on the move. Oh, and he's brought down by his neck there by. And the ball came loose, but I think they're going to call him down. Uh, as that looked like he looked like Rex could be hurt here, as one of the Defiance Bulldogs just got a arm right around his neck and didn't look like a very safe play to me. But Rex hobbles off his he's tattered and torn there. They're going to have to punt again, but. Uh, they got some yards. They got a couple first downs. Oh. Center gets off another dandy punt. He's it's been a bright spot for the Wildcats tonight. Is with his punting, as John Black makes another comes up with another good stop on. Uh, he might not have gotten the stop, but he was able to sl slow him up enough for the rest of the uh, coverage team to get there to him. Yes, indeed, Ryan Huffman. As these Wildcats will go to work on defense. Well, we've got about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's eight minutes left in the game. 25. 25. Hartzell at the carry. Stopped by Fruth. Gain of about one. It's really good defense for the Wildcats. Because what I look for Defiance to do here is uh, have a nice long drive and uh, run out the clock. That would be the most logical thing for them to do. So they can go home. Williamson gives off to 37. Hacker has an awesome run. Very, very close to the first down, but I think he's going to be a little short, about two yards short. Going to be third down and two. As again, these Defiance Bulldogs keep it on the ground, and people are exiting the stadium from both sides. Williams with the handoff. I thought I saw a ball, but I guess I didn't. That's good for a first down, a gain of about seven. That was 25 Hartzell. With a carry tackle by Tyson Bolton. As these Defiance Bulldogs keep advancing the ball. As these Wildcats do look tattered and torn. The fake handoff one way. And give it to Hacker the other way. He keeps driving. Finally brought down by... Three Wildcats, Snyder, Bull, and Kramer were in on that tackle as they faked it to the near side, executed it to the far side. A little shaking and faking and baking going on there. As Williamson just has something about him and his handoffs that I really like. He can really fake you out. There it is again, the same play. There goes Hacker. Oh! And the shoestring tackle by eight, Ryan Kramer. As Hacker took all this forward momentum and slid about five yards. First and ten defines Bulldogs from the 24-yard line. Okay. Oh, and I believe a defiance lineman jumped across the line a little bit too early. Looks like somebody just forgot forgot how many counts he was supposed to listen for there. As he just seemed to be a whole count off there. He just wasn't on the same page as the rest of, rest of the offensive line was. 
Very good call, right? As that moves them back five yards, they're going to go first and 15. Maybe they'll go to the air right here. No, they pitch it. Coming around on the near side. That's 25. Hartzell, he's going. Breaks a few tackles. 5-1. Is it a touchdown or not? He was close. I think it was. As there's a Wildcat player, Tyson Bolton. Looks like he's in pain, too. Oh, they're going to call it first and goal to go. Less than a yard, folks. Less than a yard they need to get this ball in the end zone for another TD. Timeout, Napoleon. As if these Wildcats start getting torn up, I think about putting some second stringers in to save some of these guys for the rest of the season. That's right, but for the ones that are in here, this is a real gut check for them. Being down here, just just at least putting up a fight against these bulldogs. Maybe, maybe if they don't, if they do give them the touchdown, but make it thir third or fourth down that they have to get it. Make them work for it here. But I imagine the the bulldogs aren't going to go with anything fancy here. They'll just just take it to them right up the gut with either Valdez or Hacker or Hartzell, one of those three uh, running backs. They've done a real fine job for Jerry Booty today. The first few downs of this drive were really impressive as they were doing fake to the near, run to the far, and uh, that is really an excellent, excellent fake. As they call coaches off, the refs are getting ready to get this started. And all the respective coaches exit the field. And a flag on the play, signal touchdown. But I believe this could go against Defiance. This could back him up a bit. Yes, yes indeed. That's a penalty against Defiance. Okay, first down and goal from about the sixth. So that moves them back five yards. As I believe the center moved the ball before he was supposed to. It was unclear at first as to what that foul, what that penalty was, but. And the handoff to 37 Hacker, there he goes, almost like walking into the end zone. And he gets down on one knees and thanks the good Lord above for tonight. That was an excellent blocking. Hacker, uh, I think anybody could have ran through that hole because that was just a massive hole there uh, set up by the defiance lineman. I think they got to get, should get most of the credit for that play. Just what linemen are called, the unsung heroes. They're proving that here tonight as defiance Bulldogs are winning not only the game, but the war of the trenches. Uh, the extra point attempt is good. 36 to 6. That's a 30 point difference, folks. A 30 point difference here in Paul J. Brown Stadium. With approximately 5 minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the game, it's 36 to 6. And Ryan Huffman. It would be really nice here to see the Wildcats just get something, give give the Napoleon fans something to cheer about here. They had the early explosion early, and since then it's been all the Defiance Bulldogs. And let's just have our, give, see these Wildcats give our fans something to cheer about here with this last 5 minutes and 40 seconds, maybe get a score or a good play, a big play of some sort, and, and then just finish this game off because right now we just don't need anybody injured and get ready for the Wauseon Indians tomorrow, next week. That's right, the Wildcats are going to come back tomorrow, or excuse me, Monday with a hard week of practice. And uh, they'll start it off there and they'll get mentally and physically prepared for the challenge of the Wauseon Indians. That game, of course, is also away. So we're going to have 
two games that are away. And then we'll open up with Bowling Green. And I believe that date is September 12th. As the Napoleon Wildcats run it back up to just about the 37 yard, 36 yard line. Yeah, that was Ben Snyder on the, as Ben Snyder finally got another chance to see if he could do what he did earlier in this game. Let's take a look at the football schedule. Next weekend, we're away at Wasian, and then there's four in a row at home. Bowling Green, which is parents' night. Brian Finley, which is homecoming, and October 3rd, Clay. Two more away, October 10th at Fastoria, October 17th at Miami Trace. Home on October 24th against Akron Coventry, and they finish out the season away at Swanton on October 31st, which, isn't that Halloween? Do, I do believe it is, Scott Spicer. So, that is a good assumption by you there. Maybe the ghosts and goblins will come out on the 31st of October. And, uh... Maybe that'll be a scary game. <laughs> But that's a long way away. We need to get through the other games first. Here it is. Scott Rex with a handoff. I believe that went up to Brooks Pedraza. Uh, yep, that was Pedraza for about five. And Tom Ward gets another stop who seems to be limping a little bit, but seems to be he's a tough guy. I think he'll stick it out. It's third and seven here for the Wildcats. See if we can get a first down here. Soon. They give to Ryan Kramer, who's stacked up by about, I don't know, all 30 of them seniors. <laughs> hey, yeah, Ryan. Hey, that's a good way to put it, is what's happened here tonight. As Cars are backed up to 66, trying to get out of here. And the Wildcats aren't going to try and go for it. They're going to punt it, try to punt it deep. That's number eight, Kramer with the punt. Sends another beauty down there to Hartzell. And the Wildcats stack him up and drive him down. That's 84 Everson. With an awesome hit. The monster hit. Four minutes left in the ball game. Four minutes left in the ball game. So hey, hey, we'll see what these defiance bulldogs can do. With four minutes left. 36 to 6 here in Defiance. As these Wildcats will go to work as a late player enters the game, almost too late. The handoff, he gets uh, good for about three yards. As they're slow to get up off the pile. Very slow indeed. So we do have a change in personnel for Defiance, but it's too late to worry about it now. Holyfield, Jason Holyfield, that quarterback. I believe we've got Jason Holyfield. Jason Holyfield in as quarterback, and our new running back is Willie Mendoza, number five, Willie Mendoza. Uh, as Defiance brings in the second stringers. This is what we'll see in the future years from Defiance, so pay close attention to this. As Jason Holyfield. Oh, a fumble. fumble. Napoleon had to get that one. As it looks like they're calling for the first O. Oh. Excuse me, I was wrong. That's fourth down and two for the Defiance Bulldogs. In comes the first string punting unit. They're going to punt it back to Napoleon. There's a little bit of confusion as to what happened there, I believe. Wildcats thought it was their ball, but Mendoza recovered it. 
So, back deep to receive, Snyder and Kramer. Number 30, Tom Tang, excuse me, Ward, <laughs> for on the punt. It's a high hanger. I'd like to see the hang time on that one. Snyder gets it. Gets around one defender. Can't make it around another. Stop just short of the 20 at just about the 17-yard line. Stopped by John Cooper. I wonder if he's of the John Cooper Ohio State Buckeyes fame. I don't think so, Scotty. I don't think so either. Hey, with two minutes left in the ball game, First and ten to point from our own 18. 202 left in the ball game. Score 36 to 6. The Wildcats probably are gonna go into, I would say, a two-minute offense right now and try to at least muster something up. Cesar Rodriguez motion in the backfield. The handoff to Brooks Pedraza lost his footing, it looked like. And then the defiance players drug, excuse me, pulled him down. That was Ward on the stop. And they're leaving this clock run. It's after the two minutes. And it's going to continue to run. Yes, indeed, they are. They're going to leave it run. <coughs> Scott Rex looks to be all right. He's still in there at QB. Hands it off to 27. Josh Weakers. Watch for Josh Weakers in the future, folks. He's going to be one strong, tough-minded kid that's going to have a lot of desire and determination. He's a headbanger. Third down at about six. Brad Cordes motioned in the backfield. The handoff to 27 Weakers again. He makes it to just about the 25-yard line. It's going to be fourth down, and in comes the first-string punt unit. <laughs> With 36 and running, 36 seconds and running left. We're down to about 30. The last half minute of this game. And I think immediately we can start talking about uh, this loss. There really isn't too much to say. The Wildcats tried to get on the board easy with that kickoff return. Oh, and that punt was blotched. It looks like off the side of Kramer's foot. Well, Ryan, give me your thoughts on tonight's game. I think Coach Snow is going to find an awful lot of positives and there will be some negatives coming out of this game, of course, as there are in all games. But I think John Snow, Coach John Stone is going to like the positives. He, he faced a very tough defense, and his offense stuck in there. A couple of drives, they were able to get a couple of first downs. Scott Rex did some real nice things. But the, off, but the negatives on offense had to have been the defensive or the offensive line as they gave, as they gave up way too much pressure and really knocked Scott Rex down. On defense, you had to like the way they play. They gave up a couple, a lot of, a lot, a lot of big plays, but the, but there were a lot of great, great plays in there as they really, the exception of big plays, really stopped the Bulldog offense. And with the final statistical analysis, our very own Joe Badena. Uh, four point on offense. Brick Pedraza led the team in rushing with 36 yards on 15 carries. Ben Snyder had 15 yards on four carries. In the air, Scott Rex was eight of 17 for 39 yards and one interception. Ben Snyder had the lone score for Napoleon with a 84 yard kickoff return and Napoleon only had two first downs. So they gotta work on that for next week. For Defiance, uh, Matt Valdez had 11 carries for 51 yards. Joe Williamson led the team with 113 yards on five carries and two TDs. In the air, Williams wa Williamson was six of 16 with one interception for 99 yards. And Defiance had 
seven first downs, and they had a pretty impressive game out there. And here is Scott Spicer. All right, this is going to be the final wrap-up. As Ryan said, the, you know, the Wildcats did come out to play as both teams now are in their separate huddles. Um, really, you know, and the point's got to go back and work, and they can't think about defiance anymore. It's over as of about two minutes ago. They need to look ahead to the rest of the season, and hopefully they'll try and make a positive of it. And I'd like to wish the best of luck from here on out for the Napoleon Wildcats and also the Defiance Bulldogs. Best of luck to the Defiance Bulldogs also. And uh, Ryan, is there anything else that you need to add? No, but I hope they come out and let this one go by and just come out and get ready for the Wauseon Indians, which play a week from tonight. You can see that here on NCTV5. And...